view from the newspaper. But when I do, it's because shit has gotten real. I'm folding my uh, papers from my route last night. And uh, front page of the Press Enterprise for Wednesday, June 19th. Front page article. The, the tide is liquid gold for thieves. Okay. This caught my eye. So you see here is a picture of some tide just for sitting there on the shelves being all for sale and stuff. Caption of that picture reads, Bottles of liquid tide such as these at the Stater Brothers and Supermarket in Riverside are popular among thieves who resell the product or trade it for drugs. Law enforcement officials say. Crooks are swapping the popular laundry product and many other common consumer items for drugs or cash. Drugs for laundry detergent. Laundry detergent. Okay? This is serious. This is why this article caught my eye. This is some shit. When San Bernardino police detectives raided houses to search for drugs in the past few years, they couldn't believe what they kept finding. The question started coming up. Why are we seeing so much laundry detergent in so many dope houses? Sergeant Travis Walker said. And that's what I think every time I go into a dope house. Why the fuck is with all this tide? Why is it so springtime fresh in here? Right? Strange as it may seem, detergent, specifically liquid Tide and Tide Pods, you know what Tide Pods are, right? They're the little, the little snack-sized ones, little bite-sized snacks, and you put them in the, for the kids at Halloween. Okay. Um, it's become a currency on the black market nationwide. See, nationwide, it's not just San Bernardino. That's why I was like, I gotta share this with the internet. It is traded for drugs or sold far below retail prices at open swap meets, uh, law enforcement officials and retail officials say. So when you're thinking, you know, Tide's like 20 bucks, but I got to get the good shit because I like soft clothes, you're like, I'll go to the swap meet and go see if they got any there. Yeah, yeah, you know what? <laughs> you, you buy Tide from a swap meet? You know what, next time you do that, just ask the guy straight up, you know, are, are you representing Al-Qaeda? Because the terrorists win. Terrorists are winning with this kind of shit. This is a very clear sign that there is something very seriously fucking weird. Either that, or my preconceived notions about drug dealers are all wrong. A gangsta likes soft clothes. Or they're using it to cook meth, right? That's where you're thinking, immediately you're like, hmm, hmm, can you get high off of Tide? Hmm, I don't know. Let's go ask those kids that we gave out the Tide Pods to at the, the, the Halloween time. I'm kidding, don't do that. Please don't do that. And please don't tell them that I told you to do that. For the love of God. Okay. Several factors have combined to turn the product into what some are calling liquid gold. The Tide brand is the most popular. Even though it is the highest priced, detergent is relatively easy to steal and unlike electronic items with serial numbers, is difficult to trace. And shoplifting is a relatively low risk operation compared with other crimes to make a quick buck. People refer to it comically like they're stealing laundry detergent said Richard Miller, Vice President of Loss Prevention of the National Retail Federation, which is exactly what I was like, what the fuck, they're stealing laundry detergent? That's what I said when I saw this fucking front page article. But merchants aren't laughing. Oh, savvy. Walker said one inland supermarket chain, which he declined to identify, I bet you it's State of Brothers. Um... Reported each store suffering four to six thefts of Tide per week, which each loss valued at one hundred to four hundred dollars. A thing of Tide's like twenty bucks. Five Tides is a hundred dollars. I mean, they're they're not walking out with all that much Tide, but the value, liquid gold. Let me tell you, the t the Tide thefts are part of what merchants have told. 
The National Retail Federation is an increase in organized groups stealing for resale uh, many products that people use every day. Razors, beauty supplies, allergy medicine. And you're thinking allergy medicine, right? That's what they're using to cook the meth. Allergy medicine is not what they're using to cook the meth. I don't know if you need a, an ID to buy that, but you do need an ID to buy the, uh, the uh, cold medicine because it contains the dextromethorphan hydrobromide, which is what the kids are using to get high. You know? That is some shit. I don't know what's up with the allergy medicine, but you're thinking, hey, hey, that's what's up. That's what they're doing. They're cooking the allergy meds to make the meth. You'd be surprised because that's, that's not the case. Um, the National Retail Federation lists laundry detergent behind only baby formula as the most stolen product. And if we are using baby formula to make drugs, we have fucked it up as a society. Fucked it up royally. It's a hot commodity on the streets, Riverside Police Officer Lieutenant Diane Hot Smiler said. And no, the ingredients are not broken down to make drugs, as with some cold medicines that are frequently stolen. People actually buy the stolen Tide to wash clothes. Because they, they still need soft clothes. I mean, maybe they're like, you know, I'm a drug dealer, I'm kind of a sketchy person, I'm kind of like, you know, bottom feeder-ish. I need to look my best and have the softest clothes around. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe, maybe that's like the perk of being a drug dealer is that, you know, you don't have to buy your laundry soap from the 99 cent store. You could go buy it from the guy at the swap meet at the Al-Qaeda or steal it yourself. And, and, and there you go. You got soft, summery, fresh clothes. And it feels good to be a gangster. Everyone uses laundry detergent, Mellor said, which is not true. I've met someone who did not use laundry detergent. It was not a good scene. A 2009 survey listed Procter & Gamble's Tide, along with Kraft and Coca-Cola, as three brands that consumers would never give up, no matter how badly the economy tanks. Very true. Have you ever bought Star Brand macaroni and cheese? It's terrible. Oh, it's flavorless and it's... The texture's all wrong, and there's not enough of that cheesy, cheesy flavor that we grew up with. Unless we grow up poor, then we're probably used to the store brand. But even if you grow up poor, you will spring for that extra 30 cents to get the fucking craft, because that is the shit. Oh my god, that's the shit. But uh, the funny thing is, is they mentioned that Coca-Cola is one of those die-hard products that people will not give up. Pepsi isn't mentioned. <laughs> Ooh, which is kind of funny because I think Coke and Pepsi are both basically malted battery acid flavored. Um, they're basically the same product. People will tell you otherwise, but those people are probably stealing the Coke and the Kraft macaroni and cheese to sell drugs. To, they're they're, they're going to trade for drugs. That's what they're going to do. And, and this is funny. So uh, the loyalty comes at a cost. In a recent check at a Stater Brothers market in Riverside, a 150-ounce bottle of Tide was priced at $17.97. Three dollars more than the same amount of gain, and seven dollars and twenty cents more than a 150-ounce bottle of all. Yeah, you drug dealers and your rich bitches with your particulars. <laughs> Those Tide bottles can be exchanged for $5 in cash or $10 with a marijuana or crack cocaine, says New York Magazine Suds for Drugs, Suds for Drugs article. <laughs> suds for drugs, hugs for guns, hugs not drugs and suds for guns. Suds for drugs. Yeah. God, that feels good to be a gangster. Five, $5 with a cash or $10 <clears throat> worth of marijuana. I mean, five bucks doesn't really get you very much these days. Ten bucks worth of marijuana. I mean, if we're talking about that, that medically, medical grade Cali weed shit that they sell at the, at the collectives and whatnot out here, that is some shit. That, that ain't bad. Ten bucks worth of marijuana, as long as it's good shit. As long as it's the chronic. That sonic or whatever they say. Is it chronic or sonic? Sonic Chronic. Sundar Raman, the marketing director of Procter & Gamble's North American Fabric Care Division, there's a whole division for fabric care if you did not know this, um, 
told the magazine, it is unfortunate that people are stealing Tide, and I don't think it's appropriate at all. But it, the one thing remains to me is that the value of this brand has stayed consistent. In other words, our shit's as good as crack. They just, I mean, they just said you could get Tide bucks with a crack for a thing of fucking, not just pot, but crack. You can totally just take that quote right now and just turn that into our shit is as good as crack. And then it says that uh, Procter & Gamble didn't return messages to the Press Enterprise for further comment. Because that guy summed it up right there. That's all you need to know. Tide, our shit is as good as crack. It will make your drug dealers soft and smell summery fresh. I mean, shit. I don't know which way society's going. If our drug dealers are getting all snazzy on the good shit with the long detergent, mmm, high quality clothes. Although I guess if you're going to be buying all that name brand stuff, maybe you want to wash them in higher quality stuff. I'm just trying to figure out, like, why laundry detergent of all fucking things that you could steal from the grocery store? Why not meat? Oh, meat goes bad. It's kind of hard to shove it in your pockets and whatnot, but I don't know. I'm not a pro with that, so, uh, I'm not a pro at stealing nothing, but I'll tell you something. Meat, I would think that you could get, I don't know, maybe that's more of a post- zombie apocalypse, new world order, all the shit has gone mad, sort of FEMA train shit, you know, when people are selling meat for drugs, or meat for other meat, or meat for rice, or I don't know, but I'm just really, really enthralled with this, this is great, um, the scope of the problem is far beyond a single person slipping a bottle or bag of Tide under his arm and sneaking out of a supermarket, a big box store or pharmacy, it is not limited to Tide. Rings of Thieves cost businesses $30 billion annually, the National Retail Federation estimates. This is not shoplifting we're talking about, Miller said in an interview from Washington, D.C. It's a criminal enterprise to make a significant profit. Lieutenant Diane said a crew will often have three people, a target, a lookout, and a mule. For those of you not in the know, they do not mean that they are loading up donkeys into the freaking target from the laundry zone. Though so that's fucking cool, if it would be. Uh, the target identifies the product to be stolen. The lookout makes sure no one is watching and loads the cart with Tetris-like precision. <laughs> oh man, I've been playing Tetris on my phone. I could probably steal all kinds of shit from Target. Um, they, they, they use the Tetris technique to load up on detergent, baby formula, razor blades, energy drinks, allergy medicine, and beauty products. Sometimes they'll conceal the bounty with blankets and even children. Yes, park your children on top of your stolen tide. The mule will then push the cart right out of the store. Once obtained, the products often go to middlemen who might have furnished the thieves with shopping lists. Go to the store and pick these things up for me. And don't pay for any of them because we are going to be uh, using them to uh, trade for more drugs. Drugs. Riverside Police Detective Dave Reidman said some people sell the stolen, uh, the stolen items out of their homes to neighbors who learn of their availability through word of mouth. Right, because it's like, you like soft clothes? I got the hookups. <laughs> you got laundry hookups in your house? Washer dry hookups? I got the shit for you. Reidman's partner, Detective Lori Blazlack, said stolen women's beauty products, expensive in stores, are particularly pop popular on the black market. And I'll think of that every time I see someone on the local buy-sell trade group selling mass amounts of mascara, because I see it all the time. Now I know. Al-Qaeda. Drugs. I'll be like, <coughs> I'll just flat out ask them, are you selling these because you need drugs? Can I give you drugs in exchange for these? Did someone give you drugs in exchange for these? The fuck, right? Retailers are fighting back short of putting Tide under lock and key, which, by the way, in my area, the things that are under lock and key are baby formula and wrinkle cream, uh, from what I've seen, because, yeah, it happens. People steal. Uh, Meller said some merchants shrink, rack, shrink, shrink wrap excess inventory on the shelves or otherwise make the bottles difficult to reach, <laughs> which is funny because I'm, I'm tall, so I'm that person in the grocery store, the old lady's like, Cheryl off the top shelf, and I'm like, yeah, no problem, because I'm tall. 
then like, you know, who knows? Maybe that's not really an old lady. Maybe it's a 26-year-old girl who's been on crack her whole life, and so she's like, you know, her teeth and everything's all gone, and her cheeks all singing, and she's like, could you get me that tie for the top shelf? But I'm like, yeah, I can help you. But now I know, and now I know that they're just a drug mule. Drugs, they're just doing it for drugs. If I'm going to be reaching things off the shelves, I'm going to need more drugs, you guys. <sighs> Others attach electronic devices that will activate an alarm if they are not removed at the checkout stand. In, around here, too, you know how bad of an of a area you're in in the, in the Inland Empire if the State of Brothers has a turnstile, either, either in the liquor section, which, you know, turnstiles in the liquor section, yeah, that happens a lot, but, like, when you get to, like, Rialto and the really bad places, the turnstiles are at the door because people steal that fucking much. Um, merchants, fierce competitors for com the customer dollar, also have found success by working together. They compare notes and surveillance photos on who has been stealing and when and where and forward the information to police. There is a collaboration like I've never seen before, and it's very interesting, Miller said. Organized retail crime was a hot topic at National Retail Federation Loss Prevention Conference in San Diego last month that Miller organized this whole fucking conference about this shit. Uh, he said he was heartened to see 20 law enforcement agencies represented, including some federal agencies and police as far away from as Florida. Because in Florida, they like their drugs. Um, law enforcement also is gaining awareness of the scope of the problem and is committing more resources, Miller said. CVS recently approached Riverside Police about its theft problem, Redman said, and the result was an operation on June 4th and 5th, which 28 Riverside and San Bernardino officers fanned out to 16 locations and made 38 theft arrests, including 13 for felonies. What's worse, felony drugs or felony theft of Tide? It's all the same! Reidman said the most audacious attempt attempted theft was by a woman who loaded up her cart with car batteries and tried to wheel them out the door. That's some shit. The undercover plan involved 44 retail employees at CVS, Food for Less, uh, Ralph's, Rite Aid, Sam's Club, Skater Brothers, Target, Toys R Us, and Walmart. But everybody steals from Walmart, so I don't know why they were even involved. Um, a Skater Brothers spokesman declined to discuss thefts from the markets. CVS did not return a call seeking comment. What if it's an inside job? What if they're stealing their never try your own supply? <laughs> you guys are fucking it up, CVS and State of Brothers. Um, this is the first such operation for Riverside Police, Blaz Black said. Uh, usually we're just coming in from behind. Part of the goal is to be proactive, she said. The big prize was not the thieves themselves, but the identity of those, known as fences, who would have received the stolen goods, Reardman said, Reidman said, whatever. Uh, we're going to do operations like this, Reidman added, hopefully in the same way to get the word out that you can go out and steal whatever you want, and we want to make it so that you're not comfortable that you can do that. I think people is going to steal... Their laundry detergent, as long as laundry detergent is still fucking 20 bucks a fucking bottle. Rich bitches and drug dealers and all that shit all alike. 